What's going on guys? TG or Thunder God here back with another pretty interesting video. Um, with me again today, I have Jay. Jay the Great. Say what's up, bro. Yo, yo. What's going on, everybody? And if you didn't catch, we did a pretty great video on if Sage Mo Naruto went to the Kage Summit. Um, I highly recommend checking that out. Check Jay out too. He's going to have a new video on his channel. Kind of relating to these same characters that we're talking about today later on. Yes, so definitely check that out. I'll link it in the description um, for when it comes out. But... The what if for today is if Kabuto summoned Itachi and Nagato literally in Madara's place. Like, I, and the way I want you guys to think about this is Kabuto and Itachi, like Kabuto's worst strategy with Itachi and Nagato was horrible. It wasn't bad, but he basically made an attempt to snake Obito and take down Naruto and Killer B. And it backfired on him in the most severe way. He lost Nagato and Itachi turned against him. So his top two strongest Edo Tenseis, aside from obviously Madara, uh just you know dipped on him so that that obviously didn't work out so let's say you know he doesn't go with that strategy in this timeline and when the third raikage gets taken out and that i believe it's the fourth division um correct me if i'm wrong uh, anybody in the comments but or i'll correct yeah. myself on screen but essentially when that division beats the third raikage um we would just assume that instead of madara being summoned he summons nagato and itachi and what ripple effects this kind of has throughout the story so we'll kind of be taking this through a similar situation with the kage summit video kind of dividing it up to phases with that being said you know like and subscribe if you're new here all that good stuff check out jay and let's get into the video so starting off we should establish a bit of a basis for itachi and nagato do you, do you want to lead with itachi starting off just so people can have an idea yeah so before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. War Thunder is currently one of the most popular and booming games out there. And in my opinion, one of the most comprehensive vehicle games ever created. There really is everything you can think of. Think I'm being generous? There are more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships, all included in combined arms PvP battles. The attention to detail is also just something to behold. Every vehicle looks almost too realistic, being modeled down to even the most minute individual components, giving the most immersive combat experience out there you're able to play through human history as the collection of vehicles in war thunder spans back to over a hundred years allowing you to experience the 1920s to present day this is exemplified by the in-depth customization the vehicles offer you can leave your mark on war thunder with hundreds of camouflages want more than that you can even place historical markings anywhere on your machines still not enough the game even lets you use 3d decorations such as bushes and equipment what stands out to me in war thunder is just how immersive the game is via customization with new skins and designs constantly being added an example of this for all my anime connoisseurs is that they even added anime body pillows to uh, as a customization option it just doesn't get any more great than that war thunder is free now on pc playstation 5 xbox series and previous game generations make sure to use my link in the description and play now as war thunder is currently including a bonus pack the bonus including a hundred thousand silver lining premium vehicles a 50 percent booster for xp and silver seven days of a premium account access decoration bonuses along with rented vehicles oh, and this isn't even including the daki makura stars and stripes sweetie body pillow this bone is being available to both pc and console players don't forget to use the link in the description below and download war thunder on pc playstation 5 xbox series and previous generation consoles people who use my link will get exclusive access to the waifu pillow cosmetic and anime crew voices download war thunder today as far as edo itachi uh the the main benefit and advantage he'll have as a combatant as an edo is that as we know edos don't have to deal with stamina or fatigue they're immune to that because they're already dead so essentially what itachi has borderline is is an ems now not in terms of tangible assets like speed or ap increasing but rather the ability to for a prolonged amount of time utilize these abilities so essentially he can use them theoretically infinitely essentially with the prolonged usage he'll be able to go into susano no problem and the same goes for nagato he could essentially theoretically utilize his Rinnegan abilities to his desires so against living shinobi uh, they have a huge advantage so just imagine itachi near his prime with essentially theoretically infinite stamina on top of that so truth be told itachi is who he was alive without without his sickness and theoretically infinite chakra as well now as far as his scaling we see during his time as an edo him go toe to toe with casey monato and killer b simultaneously react to both implying his level of speed as well yeah yeah and you know to kind of like supplement that i will say uh you know 
it, for those who may say like Itachi, you know, for the, the Naruto stuff, maybe, uh, you know, Naruto might be holding back because he wants to question Itachi about Sasuke. He wants to have a conversation. He wants to, he's not going all out in that encounter. That's fine. Um, we're going to talk about the Edo Tensei autopilot in a little bit, but there is an aspect to that. But basically that this isn't full power Itachi either. So it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, Itachi's full, his, he basically has his base Sharon gone out. He doesn't have a Susano out either, which is stronger and faster than he is as well. So you wouldn't really be able to derive anything. It's just like, okay, suppress Naruto and suppress Itachi. You are able to compete with one another and have a conversation. Same applies to base Killer B, who was also doing very well against the Raikage. Uh, he, there's multiple attempts where he tries to attack Itachi from a blind spot or just use the same maneuver he did against Sasuke on Itachi and it just doesn't work. So when you kind of look at it that, Itachi is very relevant to these two stat-wise, um, even a suppressed state. How much or maybe the, the speed disparity, it, it's just he, she's able to keep pace with them in combat. And this obviously applies to Nagato um, as well. So Nagato is a little different because in this scenario, Nagato is going to be starting with his gray hair. Now, the reason that he's going to be starting with gray hair is because, if you recall, he pretty much sapped version 2 Killer B's hide completely off of him, uh, regenerating his red hair and, like, rejuvenating him. So, kind of looking at it like that, we have, we more so have to look at gray-haired Nagato first. Gray-haired Nagato is really weird because he's, like, crippled, but he does have a good performance in conjunction with his summons, essentially. Uh, most people will, like, quote that Itachi just straight up negged him with a Matarasu. I, I understand the logic with this. Um, I do want to note that there is a statement that does say that uh, Kabuto's stronger Edo Tensei were resisting his control. So I think Nagato, not Shinra Tensei, Shinra Tensei, the Amaterasu off of him, was an example of that. As right after when Kabuto take control, like takes like the joystick in his hand, he basically does do it. So it always struck me as a little odd in that um, encounter. But basically, like the, the sum up for that is that just MS techniques are faster than like gray haired Nagato, which just isn't as strong as full power Nagato. No, duh, but that shouldn't be a hot take. On top of that, you know, gray haired Nagato does have a good showing against version 2B because version 2B, essentially the anime and manga differ with this. In the anime, it makes Kab um, Nagato a lot more impressive because he just blatantly dodges B's fist in the ground and then reacts to him absorbing his chakra. In the manga, it's more so shown that B kind of flips around and uses his palm to momentum himself forward, rather than just using it as an attack to attack Nagato. So either way, um, Nagato is able to just react to that level of B and just um, sap his hide off. He also is able to, you know, use all the Renegon abilities, uh, summon the chameleon, all the dog, you know, the replicating dog or that technique that he applies on the dog. You know, he's, and he's able to, like, even catch someone of QB Naruto's caliber lacking. Um, and he's not able to fully, like, it, he's, even though he does know something's up, he's not fully able to ascertain, like, where Nagato is. So, on top of that, you know, Nagato just has such a nuanced arsenal with all of the uh, Renegon abilities. But the main issue he's going to over have to overcome in these earlier, like, kind of phases is that he has gray hair. And he's not going to have access to, like, 8 tails levels of chakra to pretty much rejuvenate his chakra supply or, like, you know, fatigued form completely. That's pretty much the bottom line. Uh, red haired Nagato is like his own animal, just no diff Killer B and QB Naruto with no difficulty. Um, pretty much forced Itachi, Naruto, and B to kind of like 3v1 his strongest technique. Um, there's obviously, you know, the speed blitz argument. I will say, you know, for Nagato, like guys, there, there is a discussion to be had about like the speed blitz um, because there was a smoke screen in front of Nagato, which does impair the Renegon abilities. On top of the fact that Itachi had just like, you know, pretty much gouged out all his um, extra eyes, which would have also aided his perception. Um, The main contention with, and, and listen, listen, do not turn this video into Nagato versus Itachi. I have a video on that. It's down below. <laughs> yeah. Watch that. Uh, so don't make it about that. The bottom line I kind of want you to like realize with this is that Nagato, um, Edo Nagato with red hair and Itachi with his Mangekyo Sharingan are painted as very relative. Um, they're both just very different fighters and they're both just these forces of nature. They're both very strong. So, and it's even discussed like that with their like dojutsu being compared to one another. So the bottom line I want to get you is that these two are very comparable. That's pretty much what I want you to go in with. Please do not talk about Nagato over Sitachi. I will hate you for that. So yeah, exactly. um, and then Itachi, you know, um, if you want to, do you want to add anything to Nagato before I jump, jump add on to Itachi for a sec? Yeah, so regardless of who you think is the superior between Itachi and Pain, the ch the point is they are superior to the vast majority of the Shinobi world and working together in conjunction, there's just a force to be reckoned with that almost no Shinobi can uh, really deal with except maybe like the, the very rare air Shinobi like obviously Madara, Hashirama, Minuto, etc. 
So, like like Thunder God said, don't really try to gauge the comparison between the two because they are working in conjunction for this video. Yeah. And again, they're in rare air that most Shinobi won't touch anyway. That's the main point we're trying to hit home, if you will, is that Itachi and Nagato are, even to most Kage, uh, are vastly superior one-on-one. -on -one, yeah. So Verbatim the strongest top two Edo Tensei <laughs> at, at that time. So it's like, you know, these yeah. two are a threat so that's the that's the bottom line one again and then i all obviously have itachi with the spirit weapons you know making him invincible and black zetsu's eyes all that crazy stuff um sukiyomi genji this is all going to become more relevant as we actually get into discussions because most people have a pretty good idea of where these characters are strength wise we don't really need to keep going with that so starting yeah. off we'll be going in with gray haired nagato and itachi versus the first shinobi division now i want to start off by saying that i think you kind of have to look at moderate's performance against these two and I think that these two, just like Jay said, are that kind of rare air to where they're so much more above everybody else that they would be able to kind of replicate the same type of feat. I think Itachi with his base Sharingan would be able to do exactly what Madara did with his base Sharingan in that just taking out all these random jobbers of Jonin. But like, again, what is Jonin tier to Itachi or Nagato at this point in the series? Nothing really crazy. Uh, essentially, you know, th there's not real too much issue there. Uh, maybe you can argue Itachi might struggle like with some of his fire style as his fire style is not as de as adept as Madara's or is as large scale as like maybe somewhat of Obito or the Tentails attacks, which is what Madara's fire style is more so comparable to. So maybe he obviously wouldn't do as well in that sense. But in terms of like just rushing down a bunch of these Shinobi, he would do quite fine. And you have to ask yourself too, the problem with this is like, okay, if this were Itachi by himself, I could see a case being made for uh, Naruto, uh, Gara, and Onoki performing a similar feat to what they did against Madara with him, like pulling Itachi outside of the Susano. Even with the Yadamir, it wouldn't matter because the sand would hold down the Susano and Gara would use the sand, the light and sand at Madara's feet to pull him out. I could see a case being made. The problem is, is that even gray haired Nagato is going to be wreaking mass havoc on this division with the Renegon Summits. That's going to be a huge issue. Like, the replicating dog alone is not going to be stopped unless maybe, um, you argue, like, maybe Gara seals it, right? But just look at that problem already. You just removed, like, Gara from the equation, which just removes their entire team dynamic against Madara. So, the, this, their, this, their combos only really worked because they were dealing with one opponent. Even then, they didn't work. So, when you kind of argue that Nagato is also going to be striding around, maybe he sits because he's not as mobile yet because he has gray hair. He's sitting inside the Renegon Chameleon and just Shinra Tensing behind Naruto as he charges up Sage Mode. Or he goes around collecting Chakra from the random Shinobi to pretty much get his red hair back. There's a couple different ways to discuss this. What's your thoughts on this? So, yeah, like Thunder God said, guys, the discrepancy in power between Madara and Itachi and, and Nagato isn't really important here because the, the, the blatant premise here is that the discrepancy between Itachi and Nagato versus the fourth great shinobi war or the fourth uh the fourth division of the shinobi alliance is so vast that the difference in performance between them and madara will be minuscule and trivial because again when you're so overly dominant over someone you being more dominant than what you currently are really becomes meaningless and trivial so they will have great success like like uh, madara said and of course there are a couple of individuals where you ask yourself the question how would they do against these guys instead of Madara, like gara for example but like Thunder God said, the difference between Madara and Itachi and Nagato is that they have numbers. While it's only one more individual here in comparison to just Madara, Nagato, even crippled, is able to use things like Almighty Push or Shinra Tensei, even when he gets Amaterasu by Itachi in the original narrative, he uses it. Um, so essentially, while theoretically Itachi's in his indefinite Susano, Nagato could theoretically deflect even Gara's sand and watch, watch Itachi's rear while he's causing havoc. Um, and another way, another thing, another aspect that we discussed while the video, well, before the video was that they could bait, uh, some of the Shinobi Alliance into giving a Nagato Chakra, such as maybe Itachi doing something similar to what Madara did, utilizing his fire style to force the water style users of the fourth division to utilize their abilities, which would then bait them into giving Nagato a good amount of Chakra. Um, now is there anyone in the battlefield that has eight tail levels uh eight tail beast levels of chakra most likely not not even naruto is just a clone however he could still get a substantial amount um and as far as what the exact threshold is for him to get red hair back and his full mobility that is ambiguous but the point is he will get more powerful even with the fourth division using their ninjutsu as opposed to the eight tails again now 
another aspect that we discussed before the video was the possible combo moves these guys possess so take this into consideration for example a very possible conjunctive ability they could use is itachi and susano with yadamir out and his totska blade and nagato literally shin or tensing people using universal pull to bring him into the totska bring him bringing them into amaterasu etc there's so many things they could do is that oh itachi can amaterasu the entire battlefield and burn everyone to a crisp uh you know Nagato with enough chakra to start to utilize things like the Shinra Tensei, Chibako Tensei, maybe even a, 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 der, a derivative of the Tengai Shensei like the Madara used, maybe not on the same scale because it's not his Renegon and Madara is stronger, but there are many, many individual and or combo attacks that they could utilize. And essentially for this stage, they absolutely just have great success. There, there really is no threat to them. Um, and again, with their infinite stamina, infinite stamina and chakra and immunity to fatigue, the, the success rate is extremely high for them in this stage and they'll the most likely clear like Thunder God said. So. Yeah, yeah. The, honestly, the best way to argue against Itachi and Nagato, because if you were going to argue against them, the best way I would see it is arguing that you kind of have to look at if Kabuto leaves them in the Edo Tensei autopilot or he puts them in manual. Now, for those who don't know, the Edo Tensei, like, th there's a big distinct difference. Like, so... Kabuto had to pretty much put a bunch of shinobi on autopilot because there were so many battles going on at once and he couldn't manually control them. Like, Kabuto will occasionally control shinobi. Like, you see this with the third Raikage. He also, you know, blows on his controller and plugs it in, you know, game game controller and starts playing as exactly. Nagato. So, there is a level to this where there is a chance for the, like, you know, a possible combo attack, but it is predicated off the fact that Kabuto just will never use Nagato or Itachi or control them, which... It's kind of tough to argue, especially since this is a pretty pivotal point um, on the battlefield. And he does seem very willing to just grab Nagato because he does want Naruto um, and B. So in this situation, it could be debatable. Um, but I will say if he does manually control one or the other, it's just going to be 10 times worse. Because the difference between them Kabuto was using um, Nagato... Versus like Nagato like resisting Kabuto's control and just giving intel to everybody. Like he's like, oh, here comes a Matarasu or here comes a Jutsu from Itachi's side. Like he's sensing uh, Itachi's Jutsu. It's just night and day. There was no jokes. He was dead ass ripping Naruto's soul out while, while about to clap B. It was just night and day. And this is not even talking about him doing all the summons, all this crazy stuff. So, you know, there is, there is a layer to this. There is a layer to this. So if you argue autopilot, I think this, this division does a lot better against Nagato and Itachi. But if you argue manual, it just becomes a lot worse. And this becomes apparent because Madara was just kind of able to kind of do what he wants. Now, we're going to talk about Madara a little later. Because for some reason, this is a hot topic to people. Whether Madara was like restricted by the Edo Tensei or not. We'll address this yeah. later on. But that is a distinction I want to make clear. That there is a level to this where, okay, if you assert that, you know, the all is going on, maybe. But I still think that the duo between Greyhaired Itachi and Nagato... Is just pretty definitively above everybody here because it's really just Gara fatigued Onoki who still needs time to recover. Gara also needs a bit of time to recover. Um, Naruto who's just charging up Sage mode. It's like no one here is really like relevant. Like even in, uh, granted, Gara can do things against Itachi like block a Matarasu. Um, Onoki's particle style would just uh, well, nah, it's getting deflected by the Yadamir. Yeah, it's 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 not looking too good actually. But regardless, you know th this duo does have a good time in this division and they should be able to stall. And this is. Listen, if you think, like, gray-haired Nagato would eventually absorb enough chakra to use Chibaku Tensei, that's it, man. Forget it. Forget it. This entire yeah. division is getting blown back. Like, there's nothing they can do. Um, There's no one. It took the combined efforts of Naruto's Ross and Shuriken, Killer B's 8 um, Tails Beast Bomb, and uh, Itachi's Yusaku Magatana beats, the three beats be specific to break the Chibaku Tensei. So, to kind of look at it and say, like, these three would be able to do it, it just doesn't seem likely. I don't think so. Like, Gara doesn't really have, like, that type of Jutsu to really throw into the Chibaku Tensei. So, they do also have, like, large-scale AoE attacks. They can combat that many um, level of Shinobi. Um, even if you argued, like, Itachi was the main front runner, and um, Nagato was support, that would still be just perfectly sufficient support, in all honesty. Yeah, so, like, you, like Thunder God said, essentially, Itachi and Nagato have, honestly against most shinobi uh, damn near perfect defense with shinra tensei are theoretically watching itachi's rear and then the yadamir which is nearly omnidirectional uh best at worst it's maybe 270 degrees um so if they have a combination and conjunction of those two 
and them and, and it's in, and it's been established by us but they're faster than everyone on the battlefield they have essentially a perfect defense and and they have amazing offense as well with the abilities that they could utilize individually such as the Chewaku Tensei, the Shirno Tensei, the Amaterasu, not to mention Genjutsu, we didn't even talk about that. There's so many things that are just such, that are such a monumental challenge for the fourth division that their chances of success is near zero. But like Thunder God said, the best chances they would have would be something similar to what they try to do against Madara here. Maybe Onoki and Gara work together. Uh, he uses his particle style, and Gara, while he's using it, uses his sand to cocoon around them. But even then, Someone like Nagato could just simply use Shinra Tensei and dissipate the sand away. So, essentially, the, their chances for success is near zero. It's, it's very, very unlikely that they could be Itachi and Nagato at this point in time. So Yeah, yeah. And, and this is also, there's just not too much. So, we also do see a situation to where this kind of leads to the five Kage showing up. Because in the original timeline, granted, like, the real Madara showed up and they're like, all right. But I think Itachi and Nagato are at a like a, are of a relative you know threat level now i'm gonna make it clear but you know i just said that itachi or nagato and or nagato are not as strong as madara I, I feel like i don't have to say that but i know someone's gonna say it um it's just they're not at that that level of strength it's pretty Madara is like the fusion of the two um but i think the two of them combined would create enough noise per se to kind of warrant the five kage showing up to the battlefield now and this is consistent because even the Raikage wanted to show up when Gingaku and Gingaku were on the battlefield. So they're clearly willing. They're clearly willing. The fact that Onoki's here would also add to this. So, you know, Mei's on that side of the battlefield. So there's all this in, in light. So I think the five Kage show up. And this turns into a bit of a, a Madara 2.0 situation with Nagato and Itachi versus the five Kage. Yeah, exactly. And we said this before the video began. Uh, people will sometimes try to argue that Madara and Itachi are comparable now to qu quickly just dismantle that notion and that premise. If you just simply look at the comparisons and performances between Itachi and Nagato as Edo's and Madara as an Edo respectively, Madara was holding back for the vast majority of his time as an Edo up until probably six past Naruto emerged. He was toying with the fourth division, literally playing with them, looking down upon them both figuratively and literally and even with the five kage he's toying with them literally asking them do you want to die this way or that way implying his pure superiority and blatant superiority now conversely tachi and nagato were put in auto mode uh, and because nagato saw to them to him this objective was very important and naruto and killer b had to be uh hostages for his compromising power and so obito could work with him so we have two individuals trying more than more so than not possibly at their maximum effort and then we have madara who's literally toying with an entire alliance single-handedly so to try and claim that they're relative at, in any sort of way is certainly disingenuous and i would say that uh madara is in a whole different rare air that these not even these guys can conjunctively reach despite again their obvious success that they would most likely have here in this stage so yeah yeah, yeah. There, there's a pretty big like distinct like showing to uh when you look at even how they uh, would get released from the edo tensei coffin all of these fighters just come out when they're summoned the minute madara gets any sort of cognitive awareness he just blows the coffin open he doesn't even wait for that shit so they're even in their introduction it's made pretty explicit that madara is something different um and you know so I, I just don't necessarily see the comparison um the only argument i've seen for for whatever reason you'd want to put itachi above madara is just taking kabuto's statement about itachi's uh edo tensei being the finest but he's more so referencing itachi's character and how he yep. acclimated power versus like kabuto using like the edo tensei as pawns it's more of a character discussion it's not referenced exactly. literally into strength um similar in a situation to where like hashram was like oh you know itachi's a finer shinobi than i like he's not saying itachi's gonna fold him obviously he doesn't even know the guy like he's just simply going off his uh lore yeah exactly and the hashirama statement is another one that people genuinely attempt to uh, conclude that Itachi superior to Hashirama because he's even a greater shinobi than I, as he states. Uh, that is, like Thunder God said, most more than likely a character reference because what happened previously in the context behind that statement greatly matters when trying to deduce what a statement is trying to imply. So what we see previous to that is Sasuke telling his story, right? He tells Hashirama his story of how he sacrificed his own his own livelihood to be looked at as a global terrorist for the sake of Sasuke and the Leaf. And then the Kabuto statement, like Thunder God said, that is more so referencing his character as well. 
So you really got to take into consideration context when trying to analyze the statement and deduce what it's trying to imply to the reader. Um, another good example where battle aspects are being referenced is in the one-shot Minato manga where Kurama says, hey, uh, this is the this is a, a shinobi on par or like on the level of Hashirama unbelievable and what when we look at the canonical literature there what happens previously before that statement is sealing right he's sealing uh, Kurama inside of Koshina so the one of the best implications to make is that oh he's talking about his sealing ability or his abilities as a shinobi not his character right so yeah. the opposite would actually be weird to say if people try to argue oh he's talking about his character that wouldn't makes sense logically speaking because what's happening what is the context behind that statement well it's minato sealing uh kuruma as opposed to sasuke telling talking about itachi's character and then hashirama making that statement so you gotta you got to deduce accurately what a statement means before you just jump to conclusions i'd say yeah so yeah so it's it's pretty clear cut now that again that doesn't mean that these two aren't strong because you know if we, yep. we have this five kage scenario now i will say there is a chance that Naruto's shadow clone actually sticks around here because he kind of got like talk no jutsu by the the Onoki. He was pretty, pretty much like, "We got this, bro. Don't don't even like we are we are they slash they, uh, and we 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 literally. can do that literally <laughs> literally." And then it ended up obviously not working out, but there could be a situation where Naruto's shadow clone sticks around in this position because he is a lot closer to Nagato and Itachi, and he does have like problems with Itachi. He's like, "Listen, we gotta talk. We can't." Maybe they do end up talking before, but I definitely think, you know, Nagato and him are like close enough to where like he would remain around. And um, we'll talk about both scenarios in a second, but starting yeah. off, starting off, the main aspect everybody's going to pretty much get in a tit over is the speed aspect here, because this is really what will kind of make it or break it for these fighters before everything goes around. And I will say too, the big thing with the five Kage sticking around is like if Nagato has summons present, they are still going to be around on the battlefield. So a lot of stuff like that's been set up is present. But do you want to lead with exactly. the speed? Like, what's your what's your opinion on this? Yeah, so clearly this stage, the second stage, is certainly more interesting as there are some variables in this equation that are harder to calculate, if you will, such as, like Thunder God said, the speed comparison between Itachi and Nagato versus specifically the right Kage, who stayed in the data books to be only second to Minato, which I'll discuss now. So truthfully, though, I would deduce, regardless of the data books, statements are usually overrided by feats, and when we compare when we compare Itachi and Nagato's performance versus the Rikage's performance against Casey and Naruto, Itachi and Nagato have the better performance. Now you could argue, well, the altercation between the Rikage and Naruto is very short lived. That's fine, but he even states himself, "I used my fastest punch." And what did Naruto do? He simply dodged it. Now in the altercation with Nagato and Itachi, he nearly lost his life along with Killer B. Um, and again, like we talked about at the beginning of this video. Itachi reacts to Naruto and Killer B at the same time when they try to get one on him. He reacts to both in base as well. So, and then not to mention his success against Nagato, which people are going to say, oh, he didn't blitz him or whatever. They're relative for sure. They, they were able, he was able to seal him. He was able to intercept him. There's some level of relativity for sure. Again, that's not uh, the point. The, the point is that they're in that rare era of speed. And because of that, I would deduce, like I said, that they're probably above the Rikage in terms of speed because, again, feats override statements most of the time. Now, where it does get interesting, though, and me and Thundergirl were talking about this before the video, is how fa how much faster does the Rikage get when Onuki is manipulating gravity and making him lighter and yeah. faster, as stated by, uh, I believe, Madara said when he noticed it. So, unfortunately, it is unquantifiable how much faster he becomes. Um, there's nothing really to compare that moment to with others. It, it would have been nice if we had, like, him fight a similar opponent in that form versus him without Onoki. That would have been nice. We just don't have that on, on hand. But we could say, obviously, he certainly got faster. But however, Killer B, excuse me, Nagato and Itachi are both in that rare air of space and speed, in that rare air of speed, essentially. So it would be two guys, if we're being generous, on that level of speed. And if we're being dis if we're not being generous two guys are even above the rikage in speed so regardless of the speed discrepancy we either have two guys that are superior to the rikage more than likely in speed or if we're being generous to the rikage we'd have two guys on or relative to his level of speed which would be very disadvantageous to him and obviously to the rest of the kage which honestly pale in comparison in speed to 
any of those guys. Um, so it, the speed, I would say, will most likely, as far as the advantage, go to Itachi Nagato, regardless. So. Yeah, and, and I'll add to this because you know the whole the whole deal with like light. The, the first and foremost, the whole deal with like uh, Onoki using light and boulder jutsu on the Raikage. This fundamentally does eliminate Onoki from like mate using particle style, which is like pretty big against like these two. Um, maybe like not actually it isn't really that big, but it eliminates Onoki from the fight. I'll say that. Uh, the problem is though is that like Jay said, it is rather unquantifiable. Maybe you can make an arbitrary like statement and say like maybe it's like a blitz tier above because it's like a substantial difference like how much uh, Onoki lightens. Like it's not it's not a joke how much he lightened the Raikage. I mean pretty much you know if you want a one to one he was able to lift Turo Island because he lightened it so much. Like that's Turo Island Naruto is training on. So it isn't inconsequential. But for those who don't know, pretty much he was making the Raikage lighter and heavier. So while the Raikage was moving, he was making him lighter. And then when the Raikage was striking down, he made him heavier. So he's doing a bit of a combo like that. But the problem is, right, even if you gave the Raikage this, it's not as if um, Itachi and Nagato don't have options. For example, like I know Genjutsu is going to be a big one. Um, the, Like a, a problem people say is like someone I've heard the argument that like the Raikage is immune to Genjutsu this is not true like where people get this twisted is because he looks up at sasuke in the five kage summit and he's like you're not gonna get me with your genjutsu and the reason he does is because the uh Rikage already inherently has a large chakra supply which makes him very difficult to control via genjutsu and on top of this he has an extra layer of chakra armor which would also aid him in this front this is also like full power Rikage. he obviously gets put under moderate genjutsu later on but this does not mean the Raikage is immune to any Genjutsu. It's not. It's more so that at that point in time, like Sasuke's Genjutsu, which was basically the peak of the basic Sharingan, wasn't enough to put him under. Obviously, Itachi's is far above that with Tsukiyomi. It's more, his Genjutsu uh, prowess is far more comparable to EMS Sasuke's as shown like when they escape. So it's just a different level. I think Tsukiyomi would be very effective against any of the five Kage. And Genjutsu is a big problem because Madara didn't utilize it, obviously, because he was sandbagging. But just to kind of know, like even if you think like the Raikage does get a speed tier, A, that doesn't necessarily mean he would just overwhelm Itachi and Nagato. And B... The problem with the Raikage too is that he essentially, we're talking about this, is a chakra battery for Nagato because he is someone who has comparable amounts of chakra to the eight tails, which would allow Nagato to get his red hair, which is just going to be so much more disastrous. So even if you were kind of going off like, okay, gray haired Nagato, I'm not really feeling it. Uh, I don't really know. It's a little inconsequential. There is a chance that could happen. A Bancho tending into a like a chakra absorption. Maybe Itachi holds him down with the Susano can very much happen. So that is something to note as well. Um, I, side note, I've also heard it thrown in that the Raikage cannot maintain his chakra armor for long periods of time. Um, I haven't seen too much arguments for or against this. The only thing I've seen is that he doesn't maintain it in the five Kage summit. So um for lo for a prolonged period of time after his fight with sasuke and doesn't use it when he's racing to the room to go um you know fight sasuke again so maybe there's some merit to that but again he does use it for a prolonged period of time against madara so maybe there's not so that is something i also wanted to throw in but essentially and th this should like say something the raikage lightened is the make it or break it point because otherwise the kage have no chance like may is doing nothing to um you know itachi uh, even if the even if her you know lava style did hit which it's not fast i don't think it is um I, we, we've talked about this in sage mode naruto uh versus the five kage i don't think her lava style is particularly fast uh even her best showing against madara is questionable because madara is holding back so i don't necessarily think that's something to support but even if you gave it that yadamira blocks pretty definitively it's only shown uh melting the base rib cage Dunade also doesn't make too much of a difference it's just the other Kage don't really make it up. Do you wanna do you wanna jump in on this? Yeah. So like like Thunder God said, as far as Genjutsu, because uh, I have heard that as well that he's immune to it. He's actually not. It's actually an uh, an empirical feat that Madara actually catches him in a Genjutsu, and he says, "I fell susceptible. I just fell to Genjutsu towards the end of the five Kage altercation with Madara." Okay. So yeah, he's not immune to Genjutsu. That's certainly not the case. In fact, I just proved via contradiction that's not the case and in fact the antithetical uh stance is the case so he would be susceptible to a very revered genjutsu like itachi's specifically a sukuyomi now if he's able to get caught by what appeared to be a base genjutsu from uh, ems madara it's very likely and near absolute that he'd be caught by sukuyomi or something of that nature uh, with itachi being a very very proficient genjutsu user himself 
Now, as far as the speed, uh, like Rayco like Thunder God said, it's very unlikely that he is a, a tier above Itachi and Nagato. Um, like I said as well, at best, he's, a, he's having to deal with two individuals that are at his level of speed or relative to it. So that would be very, very detrimental to them. And with the speed advantage on Itachi and Nagato's side, everyone else would have very hard times even hitting him, even hitting them, let alone defeating them. Now, when it comes to the other Kage, Mei would actually be arguably a liability because in character, she uses her KK Tota, I believe, very, very, very adamantly, like she did against Sasuke, like she did, like she did against Madara. In fact, it was... Uh, it caused Madara to say, wow, this isn't even worth absorbing. This, this is garbage. Joke. It's like what it yeah, doesn't even care. Yeah. And what would happen is Nagato and Itachi would deduce that, uh, like Karin did, that he that the Red Kage has Bijou levels of power. Karin stated this during the Five Kage Summit. So if Nagato is able to successfully grasp and like ply himself to the Red Kage like he did to Killer B in the original narrative, he will get his red hair back. If his... Uh, chakra levels are comparable to tell beast levels he will get his red hair back not to mention may using her ninjutsu so effortlessly she'd probably start shooting her lava style start using a water style that'd just be more chakra for him to absorb as well so essentially these guys are the kryptonite to these individuals because we have nagato who can absorb everything and then we have itachi who could seal anything block anything and genjutsu anything to his to his bidding so these guys lack the speed and lack the arsenal to contend with these guys. And the only hope they have, like like Thunder God said, is if the Rei Kage is substantially quick enough, which is most likely not the case. There just isn't enough empirically to reinforce that premise. You'd have to speculate. And at that point, you're fighting a losing battle logically. So against the five Kage, they would just be so dominant, regardless of the numbers advantage and regardless yeah. of the five Kage being Kage. Again, we're not saying they're fodder. They're, they're very powerful. I mean, they, they did okay against a... A very uh nonchalant madara but mitachi and agato first of all wouldn't play with their food they would not play with their food here itachi's not known in character to do such a thing he would respect the kage and nagato as well and if they go into auto mode especially which kabuto is capable of executing the battle will not go well for these guys at yeah. all unfortunately and, and i'll say this you know because we're on that speed aspect but i will i will kind of like encapsulate that point with this even if you're the most conservative and say, right, that, you know, the, the Raikage, like, at max speed. Here's the thing. If you're the most conservative, they would still be relevant to the Raikage and speed because they're still relevant, like, relative to QB Naruto and Baze B, who, exactly. holy shit, are also a rival to the Raikage and speed. So it's like, when you kind of look at it like that, they're just, there's no way to really slice that. Even if you give the, the speed advantage to a single fighter, A, that eliminates two fighters because the Onoki has to lighten him. And B, it's not as if we didn't see. It would kind of be a rerun because Nagato has the innate ability to split these fighters up. And like the, the replicating dogs, obviously, maybe you argue Gara seals it. You know, that's going to be an issue. But he can summon all of these uh, summons to aid his visual uh, insight, pretty much giving him, uh, pretty much distracting the Kage. That's the main thing. If the Kage get distracted, it's just going to open up for Itachi to come in and maybe take one out. Because Itachi's a slippery fighter. He's just going to come in with Totsuka Blade a bunch of times. For the Kage, you have to be really generous and argue that they perform something akin to what pushed Madara to do the final, um, like per perfect Susano. With like, you know, they they the Tsunade gives Onoki the chakra, his ch chakra, large scale particle style into you know the sand, lightning, water, dragon combo, paralyzing ceiling into you know the perfect Susano. You have to argue that. And that would only work on one of two fighters. It wouldn't even account for the other fighter because the other one would just regen. So you'd have to be extremely charitable to the Kage. Um, and their win conditions are just very limited. Like even if you give them more, um, like for example, I think one of the better ways to argue for the Kage is weighted boulder into sand ceiling. But again, it's not like that. Even if you argue like that did work on Itachi, it wouldn't work on Nagato because he would just continuously Shinra Tensei even as the sand came around him, even if he was weighted down. So it doesn't change too much. It really doesn't. And so and kind of looking at like that, 
the Kage just don't really have like the firepower or ability to combat these two. Um, even Tsunade, who's slower than Raikage, like she's not gonna crack the Yadimir, obviously. Like she barely yeah. cracks the moderate base Susano rib cage. So there's nothing too much there. And she only really her her breaking the Susano is very it's a good feat. I'm not gonna dispute that at all. It's just that their best feats about breaking the Susano rib cage are usually done in combination attacks. But you know, there's certain absolutes you could say for the Kage. Like, obviously, Itachi's fire style is probably going to get taken down by Mei's water style. It's taken down Madara's fire style and stuff like that. But again, you know, maybe, maybe, obviously, Asaka Magatana beads aren't going to be that crazy. But when you get into these characters, their full power and how they're going to be coming at it off till, especially if Kabuto's making them do that, there's just not going to be that level of fight to where Madara was just sandbagging around, verbatim testing the Kage playing with you know literally playing tetris while he's fighting them in the back is nothing nothing's going down. literally literally so, yeah do, do you want to add anything to the five kage portion yeah so like thunder god said we have to remember how dominant Madara truly was in his altercation while playing with his food he's literally talking down upon them almost broke their will and for one for onoki their will would have been shattered they might have just conceded at that point and allowed themselves to be eliminated onoki was the only one that upped the resolved and Madara acknowledge that as well he even went as far as to say how do you guys want to die that's how much that's how much more dominant i am than you i'm gonna let you guys decide you want got you guys want wooden clones uh 25 wood clones or do you want 25 susanos you guys let me know so that's yeah. how dominant he was now itachi and nagato in character are not the types to play with their food especially itachi is extremely intellectual and um doesn't really have an ego um at least when he's being himself and not undercover trying to trick sasuke so they would be concise. They would be very concise. And like uh, Thunder God said, even Tsunade's strength wouldn't be enough here because he has the Yadamir. And the data book stats, states that all ninjutsu, rather, whether spiritual or physical, etc., are lose their meaning, essentially indicating that they're useless against it. You cannot penetrate the Yadamir. So someone even of Tsunade's caliber of strength would not be able to go through that and particle they style do use either, yeah. Literally. yeah not, not yeah. even particle style like if he uses that like laser particle style that he used against madara when he took his arm off it wouldn't even penetrate that it would lose its meaning like the data book states and even if you don't want to consider the yadamir omni omnidirectional like i said earlier all they'd have to do is have nagato wash the rear whatever degrees of of space are vulnerable to the susano and he'd wash the rear and shinra tensei everything away everything would be Shinra Tensei. So even if they use combo tactics Madara when uh, Shinada came from the front and Onu and then Onoku and Rikage came from the back of the Susano, that wouldn't work either because you'd have the Yadamir in front and then you have Nagato in the back. Even if it is open space, he would Shinra Tensei them away. Yeah. So essentially they have a 360, 360 degree uh, sort of radius of defense. It's, it's going to be damn near impossible to hit them, especially with the speed disadvantage and discrepancy they most likely have. So the margin for error for these guys is so minuscule that there's not much, they can't really make mistakes because both guys possess, on top of that, one-shot abilities. You got Tsukuyomi, you got Soul Extraction, yeah. you got Chibaku Tensei, you got Amaterasu. There's so many tools these guys have. And again, they're Edo Tensei. They could utilize this to their will, to their yeah. desire, to their heart's content. So it's very unlikely that they pass. It's unfortunately that the five card have a chance, so. Yeah, yeah, like even their best win con, like, light and dry kage doesn't like put down the edo tensei it does it, it doesn't yeah. solve anything really uh exactly so it, you encapsulated it this isn't even talking about chibaku tensei and how like they have nothing for that like that's yeah. just it yeah. that's just it like there's no there's no talking about none of the summons which like naruto's ross and shark and isn't gonna like able to break through this isn't talking about any of that man so it's just it's not a good look for the five kage um i actually think they lose early, and me and Jay agree on this, they lose faster than they did against Madara. I think it would be comparable amounts of time, but just due to the, like, difference in how Madara was just playing around. He literally sat back and was watching Evo versus these dudes. It's not, it was not the yeah. same thing. He kind of let them, um, and he was just very interested in seeing how they were doing. So, he was just bored for a pretty good duration of the war. But, yeah, that seems pretty likely that Itachi and Nagato would come out with a pretty distinct W. Um, They would just take down the Kage. Yes, the Kage can win, I just think like it's a Hail Mary and you'd have to be super, super, super generous to the Kage. Exactly. And it's a little disingenuous along with like not really lining it up with the scaling. So yeah, I don't necessarily agree. I don't think the Kage uh, have this um, against this duo. Yeah. So yeah, essentially the five Kage 
have the, a very minuscule, very minuscule margin for error. And like Thunder God said, we do we agreed that the duration of this altercation would actually be less because again, kind of going back to the stage one, despite Madara and Itachi and Nagato's discrepancy in power, the the way they fought in character would be different, right? Madara was toying with his food the entire time until probably Naruto and Sasuke got six past powers. And Itachi and Nagato are very concise and are very calculated, especially Itachi being a genius. So they would probably even finish quicker. They would probably say, you know what? Especially if they're in, they're in auto mode and they're fighting uh, to the best of their ability, they would try to end it as quickly as possible and complete Kabuto's objective, which is to win the war and get you know the, the tailed beast for compromising power with Obito. Um, so yeah, they, they would certainly most likely finish faster. And again, because of the one-shot abilities that we went over. So that, that is definitely most likely the case here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So kind of looking at it like that, we definitely see a situation where the five Kage lose. Now, this is interesting because from this point forward, it, you kind of we're, we're going to make some like character statements and just kind of like interpret the story in our own way. But the way we see this is that Kabuto would send Itachi and Nagato to Obito's battlefield via Kabuto's orders. And this this is relevant for a couple reasons. A, because, well, th 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 there's a layer to this because Lord Mu still exists, um, but Kabuto does need one Edo Tensei present to summon Madara. So whether he has Lord Mu, because Lord Mu kind of got chased down in the original timeline. So if you argue that, you would have you would need Itachi and Nagato to be somewhere near the battle actually present to summon Madara. So we do think he would send Itachi and Nagato to go to Obito's battlefield. Now, this is where things get dicey. This is where things get yeah. hot. This is this is this is the meat of it. So essentially what we saw, we were kind of looking over the chapters to kind of see how long it would really take them. This is this is impossible to kind of view because you can't really judge these stories or at least manga based on like time frames in the manga. It doesn't really work because certain events happen at a quicker pace and just using like chapter length or certain arbitrary tactics do not work in terms of like pinpointing a uh, time frame. Now, what we do have is a period of time where after the KCM2 event where Naruto links up with Kurama, uh, he essentially does fight Obito for a, a di like undisclosed amount of time. Um, there's a bit of off-screen movement by everybody. This is where the Shinobi Alliance moves and stuff like that. So there is a period of time where we think that from Madara using the perfect Susano at night and to the Shinobi moving, that's when Itachi and Nagato would kind of be moving over to Obito's battlefield. So we see them arriving at some point during then. Um, again, this is like... We, we're making an assumption here. There's no real way to gauge it, like how fast they would actually get to the battlefield because we don't exactly. know Itachi and Nagato's travel speed. Uh, we just have no way of knowing it. Kabuto was forcing them at a certain speed. But, you know, with that being... Um, maybe you could... Yeah, there's no there's no real way to judge it Um, on top of that. Do you want to add, like, a, a little simmer in there? Yeah, so a, a big problem I have, just in general with power scaling and narrative analysis attempting to do here is like thunder god said using your own arbitrary metric system to try and conclude a definitive um, amount of time or amount of power a character may have is not the most valid and logically accurate way to scale or tell an, scale someone or tell an amount of time because there's no way to validate your arbitrary metric system you know there's always like pixel scaling and all these weird arbitrary metric systems that people attempt to use there's there's no way to establish the credibility behind that so when it comes to uh so things such as trying to establish a time duration from chapter to chapter or panel to panel it's essentially nearly impossible unless the writer himself says oh this is three years after or something like that then obviously that's blatant and you have a an actual numerical value to represent a certain numerical quantity so but but the, the point is like thunder god said using your own arbitrary metric system that's only dependent upon your own discretion and emotional appeal and your own uh, subjective lens is not the best way to conclude on something like this something or something like power scaling in general so we had to sort of like spitball when most likely they'd show up and we we agreed like it would be during the obito altercation um, maybe around the time Naruto gets KCM2. That's what we most likely said would be the case. But again, like he said, there's no way to conclude on their travel speed. There's no likely, there's no, there's no way to conclude on what exact moments are taking place during which chapters and how the battles are progressing in comparison to each other, like how quickly uh, Madara disposed of the five Kage versus how quickly the Obito altercation ended. Yeah. There's no real way to quantify the discrepancy. So we ha we're admitting that we have to assume which I think is the best way to, to progress. So Yeah, yeah. And I think the most interesting thing that comes from this is 
when itachi gets exposed to naruto there is a very good chance almost like pretty much 100 percent certain that kodo will activate because this is a pretty dire situation for the alliance and obviously like there's no reason to suggest it would not activate now the reason we didn't say it activated earlier when itachi was exposed to naruto's clone is because it just there's no real way to objectively say it just doesn't seem likely that Kodo would activate via Naruto's clone. There's also there's like a there's like a feat, for example, like a 30% when the 30% Itachi clone like fights Kakashi, he uses Genjutsu on Kakashi's clone and it just doesn't work. So maybe the Jutsu wouldn't resonate off of some like logic via that. But there's really no way to tell. We just don't really think it would activate. It, it just doesn't seem likely, and that's what we're going with. I mean, if you if you disagree, I mean you got that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know yeah. like what to say. Like it, it just doesn't seem likely. You know what I'm saying? But you know, let's say they pull up, they're fighting. Um, because obviously Kakashi and Guy are here too. I mean, I will say as well is that the Edo Jinchuriki are around. It's just that they're in base. Like they don't the tail beasts aren't there. And like we see this because Killer B is actually like holding them down. And there was like off-screen fighting as Obito was using the ghetto statue. So, you know, there is that. Uh, maybe they even weren't fighting and um B was actually still holding them down just so they couldn't move or anything like that. But it does seem likely because like the Edo Tensei was released there that the base, you know, the 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 humans who were active were just still combating uh, around. Now, the issue here is Itachi's gonna break free via Kodo. That's pretty much clear. In which case this scenario kind of turns into itachi plus naruto b kakashi and guy yeah. against obito the base edo jinchuriki the ghetto statue and nagato it's kind of like now a team deathmatch scenario which is pretty sick to think about now starting off i will say this i will say this pretty much you know itachi and nagato they know each other's arsenals very well um they would if they didn't before they would obviously now in my opinion group a which is like itachi squad has a pretty big advantage since group b is getting carried pretty hard by obito and the problem is it's not like obito can play defensively for nagato the way i was talking i was talking with um jay about this the way i kind of view it is that it's you know itachi was able to defeat nagato and his techniques with assistance from naruto and b so if you go up the fact that a this is a stronger naruto um also complete a tails killer b with comparable support in the form of kakashi and uh, sixth to seventh gate guy he should be able to open up nagato again for the the totsuka blade now there is an level to this to where like okay how does nagato summons do and um, we do know itachi's a madarasu who does hard counter nagato summons but again like the support here should be enough to where he should open up nagato again do you want to talk about that yeah so like thunder god said um, when it comes to Itachi versus Nagato, luckily we got an event between them as Edos, and Itachi, like he would here, had help in that altercation and, and was able to dispose of Nagato via ceiling via Totsuka Blade. So here it would be similar. He would have uh, he would have more help and a stronger iteration of Naruto on top of that, a faster iteration, a more powerful and potent uh, combatant iteration of Nagato with him reaching KCM2 here, who's certainly faster and more capable. So his success rate against Nagato would certainly be higher. Now, when it comes to Obito, this is where being an Edo would be an advantage because Obito, for a lot of people don't realize, had to simultaneously had to battle, you know, Naruto and company while also restraining the Tail Beast via the Renegon chains that he uses. So. He's having like this chakra pull, this like chakra tug of war with the tailed beast while fighting Naruto and company at the same time, implying that fatigue will kick in. He even states this later on in the war. Even one red gun is extremely heavy on my chakra network. I could even use two because it's just too much on my chakra network, implying that fatigue kicks in for him as the battle ensues and progresses. So there's even an argument to, to be made. I'm not saying this is objective or 100% concrete that. Because Nagato and Itachi are Edos, Obito might start to reach their level because of the fatigue that starts to set in at this point in time. There's no way to like quantify what the decline in ability is for Nagato, for uh, Obito, and how quick the fatigue is starting to take a toll on him. But if it's substantial enough to where he's even relative to those two, uh, there's a very good chance, like Thunder God said, that Itachi will deal with Nagato and be able to seal him away um if fatigue starts again to kick in for obito because of the renegon's large amount of chakra extraction i guess you could say so. yeah 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 i definitely agree it doesn't help that nagato himself has mobility issues that you know obito can't compensate for like obito is gonna do well 
um against all these fighters like he was doing well before like it wasn't really like he was struggling it's just that you know it, it kind of depends how you like interpret this fight too because maybe like nagato pulls up on the ghetto statue with um obito and they like you know they're doing some crazy combinations there i could see that but a big outlying problem is that once like if you assume that like itachi and nagato have like a relative fight for example and that uh naruto and co fight obito in the base elgin Cherokee, like they did in the original timeline this is like kind of that turning point to where we can kind of see madara coming into the picture now even though there's no one present on the battlefield either there's a couple things could happen either nagato straight up summons madara on via kabuto's orders which i'm gonna be honest if that if that, that happens that's it if you give nag if you have nagato a madara and obito versus these these fighters that's yeah. what, that's that's let's, let's let's start with that or if nagato gets sealed um the, even though itachi might not be in control here there is a um or like you know he's not gonna be on kabuto's side kabuto does have options he could actually just have Madara summon to a different front on the battlefield as Edo Tensei fighters are still going to be present. So it's not as if, if he can't have Madara summon um, and have Madara move over to that side of the battlefield too. So Madara will make an appearance at some point. And he can send Madara over, which is a pretty a, a pretty big like no-no for these guys. What, what's your thoughts on Madara? Yeah, so in character, what would most likely happen is if Naruto and company start to take the advantage and start, a, start to en enact their will in this battle kabuto would feel like he's against the corner not to mention that he wants compromising power with obito and obito would have to ward off them and he'd say you know what i'd have to i'll have to bring out the big guns now i'm gonna have to bring out madara and once he has madara emerge at this point this is no longer even a contentious uh discussion at that point madara is so so ahead of everyone in the battlefield uh besides arguably full power white mass obito that the tides will single-handedly change from just him being present alone um he will single-handedly change the tide of how this battle and overall war is going so if, if he's in the battlefield with obito and nagato and the jinchiriki there's going to be a large shift in momentum momentum will shift from most likely naruto and company at the initiation of this to obito madara and company now because madara is just so vastly ahead of these individuals you even see him casually react to even kcm2 naruto and he really isn't challenged until six pass up and above once he already has his own six pass powers prior to that he wasn't really challenged he arguably killed sasuke and naruto in the war arc because he extracted naruto's soul and then he basically killed sasuke so arguably he, he was always the superior to these guys even later on in the narrative when they get more powerful so if we're talking about this kcm2 naruto just is fresh out the you know fresh freshly friends with kuruma they're gonna have a very very tough time not to mention that he's an edo not to punch not to mention he's his own running on user so at this point we're talking about three running on users on the same side nagato madara that's and so obito crazy that's so crazy uh, yeah and to think about. two of them with sharingan by the way so we have like these hybrid fighters along with nagato with two of those guys being Edo's, essentially having infinite chakra against Naruto and company. And I'm sorry, but Itachi just wouldn't be very useful here. Not even he uh, pales the comparison to Mara at this point in time when comparing feats. So it'd be a, a huge shift in momentum here. Yeah. So. Yeah. KCM2 Naruto is pretty confident. Like he's de definitively like the strongest one here. Like it may be like some, you know, Itachi fans, maybe some some way you could argue that, sure. But, yeah. you know, Madara no diff this shit out of Naruto. Like he literally came in and just Uchiha reflection, t um, you know, and just slapped him away. He's not threatened by Naruto at all. There's even like, it's just so, there's even a statement in the Storm games where he's like slapping around Naruto. And he's like, you're so garbage compared to Hashirama. Like it's bad how much lower this dude is. I'm, and I'm not quoting Storm as fact scaling. I'm just saying that it's like kind of continue with a joke for anybody wondering. Yeah. But, but. You know, it is pretty definitive. Um, Madara no diffs Naruto with his wooden dragon. So there is, and it just completely ruins the Kurama avatar. So there isn't really anything there. And again, there's a layer to this to where like, maybe you argue Itachi does something he does in canon and leaves to go stop the Edo Tensei. So you basically have like Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Guy with less intel on Obito and Madara showing up 
like you know assuming nagato gets sealed which is just gonna end naruto and co because like they're not gonna have the, that like they're pretty much not gonna have obito's mask broken i'm um, not gonna be challenging obito's hypocrisies um they're not gonna have that intel on how to counter kamui none of that's gonna be in play it's just gonna be um toby versus um and madara versus these guys now there is a way to argue this in the sense that like okay maybe you could argue um kabuto because he was planning to snake obito would use Madara in this situation against Obito. Now, I, I said this before in a different video, um, it, you know, when I was talking about like Obito versus Kabuto, like whose army would have won. I am a yeah. firm believer that at any point, Madara could have just flexed off um, Kabuto's control and just reversed the signs. The reason people think this is contentious is because Kabuto was essentially occupied with Naruto, um, with Sasuke and Itachi and wasn't restricting Madara's movements. Now, on top of you know it is it's pretty display it's displayed pretty prominently that when you're at a certain strength uh, threshold you can kind of override the the binder in an edo tensei we see this with hashirama now maybe hashirama might not be a good example but tobirama himself actually thinks that because he was brought back near to his like full strength he could have just flexed off Orochimaru's control. And Orochimaru actually does have the same Edo Tensei as Kabuto. He extracts all the intel from Kabuto and his chakra back. So he has a full idea of everything Kabuto did to the Jutsu and what's happening in the war. So it is the same variation. So he does get buffed by Kabuto's intel as well. So essentially you have this fighter who's also on par. As if this isn't enough. He's also being amped by Senju DNA, which just brings him even clo arguably closer to his full power. So it's just literally. like, literally. So it's like, you know, I've never agreed with the notion that Madara would, would have ever been restricted by Kabuto. And even he calls the uh, Jutsu juvenile. So I think what actually happens is that even if Kabuto tries to make it like uh, Madara fight, like as his own party, he's literally going to just see Obito and be like, bro, what's up? And just do the ju um, unbind himself and then assist Obito because he has way more loyalty, or not even loyalty, but Obito's his main comrade. Kabuto's just kind of this guy who brought him back. That's the main thing. And even then, they're not comrades. They're just working toward, uh, towards the same goal. I know I talked for a minute. Do you want to, like, add to that, please? Yeah, so, like Thunder God said, throughout the narrative, there's implications made uh, but by the via illustration that if you summon an Edo that is beyond your own caliber, they can break out. Orochimaru said it. When he summoned the four kage and he said oh hashirama could literally break out anytime he wants and we see so he gets to sweating and fear and sasuke worried and orochimaru worried and they're all worried because hashirama could break out at any moment and if it weren't for sasuke sort of talking to them he probably would have and probably would have ended their lives to be honest if you would have seen him as threats um so and additionally black thunder god said Orochimaru, when he was resurrected, I guess you could say, via Kabuto, he took all of Kabuto's uh, memories and abilities with him. And this just is further proven by the fact that when he used Edo again, he, he had a better variation and derivative of Edo. Because in the Konoha Crush arc, we were talking we're talking about some very, very nerfed Hashirama and Toborama Edos yeah. here. We're talking about guys that were disposed of by old man heroes and shadow clones. That's how nerfed they were. And then when you compare him to the war arc, they're on a completely different scale. So clearly he did take everything Kabuto learned about the Edo Tensei and use that when he summoned the Hokage, which just reinforces the premise Thunder God made that he's using the same Edo Tensei. And because of that, you can imply that like Orochimaru's Edo Tensei, Kabuto's Edo Tensei has the same weakness and exploitation and vulnerability that can be exploited, which Madara very easily could. So what would happen is he'd be reanimated Kabuto would be like, kill Obito or something like that. And Madara would be like, come on, man. And just flex and just kind of shake it off with his pure. I mean, maybe he would flex his chakra and, and kind of just shake Very it off. Right. And, and then probably undo the reanimation like he did in the original narrative when the five Kage really thought they had him and sealed. He's like, you, the caster messed up. I know how to undo this. He undid it and he was alive again. So that's by far the most likely conclusion here. Yeah. When it comes to Itachi, Itachi is very analytical and tactical. So what would happen is when Madara makes his way and his presence is introduced into the altercation, Itachi would qu quickly come to the conclusion that, hey, we're, we're fighting a losing battle hill. This, this guy's an Edo. He's way more powerful than any of us, even you, Naruto. So I'm going to have to find the guy that did this to because that's the best hope of stopping this. Maybe if we're lucky, uh, Madara would, would uh, be removed from the battlefield because he's an Edo. But again, that wouldn't happen anyway, even if Itachi does stop Kabuto because he would just break out of the re reanimation contract and alive himself again. So Madara, 
would more than likely break out just like Hashirama could have and just like Toborama implied he could have as well. So yeah. it'd be really, really bad for a Kabuto as well. Yeah, so. yeah. And that's like that, like the most generous interpretation for like the Naruto side is assuming Itachi actually does end up sealing Nagato. If he doesn't and like it's a 3v1 or maybe, you know, maybe he tries to turn like maybe a situation I can see is maybe like Kabuto tries Obito or Madara with Nagato, which like, no, no, it's not. It's not happening. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just not. He's not on that level. So either way, like we do see Nagato getting taken out here. Um, like, there's just no real way to argue he stays in this battle. Um, unless it's just like some weird stuff from Kabuto. Um, that's not to say again. Um, Kabuto is uh, Nagato isn't relevant. But at this point, even Chibaku Tensei just isn't enough to take down the fighters present. And the reason this is so big is because Itachi getting you know broken out of Edo Tensei at this point in the war is way too late in the war because at this point he had already solved the Edo Tensei issue in the original timeline and the reason yep. the reason this is essential is because this has a pretty bad ripple effect for a lot of battlefields because in a lot of battlefields they actually were still fighting against the um the their Edo Tensei opponents where you know some of the battlefields they actually had just one um, they were just sitting stationary, um, and like having the, you know, a bunch of them had the, the Edo Tensei like binded, um, some of the, like you, for example, Dan, but for a lot of them, you know, they were still fighting. So there is a bit of a ripple effect to where, okay, if you kind of look at it that maybe the Shinobi wouldn't be able to leave their battlefields and it goes, go assist Naruto as early. If the Ten Tails does emerge as well, assuming Naruto and Ko could actually stall for as long as they do, um, because the, in this situation, not going to have as much intel on Obito, obviously Madara is going to be present. Maybe Madara plays around and maybe the Ten Tails uh, emerges. But again, like even if the Ten Tails emerges, this, uh, this, at this point, if Itachi does stick around, he himself cannot make up any difference against the Ten Tails. It's just too strong for him himself um, to add any support to. Ten Tails was clapping, K you know, QB Naruto and complete Killer B. There just really wasn't anything there. Um, so in my opinion, this just has a pretty big disastrous ripple effect for the series uh in the fact that it just kind of prolongs a lot of events and just makes it so that the villains have way more time in the form of obito and this is just not this is like assuming madara appears because we do think he does but if he doesn't you know that's also pretty bad because then like Ma not kabuto would just summon madara maybe to the other battlefields eliminate them and then the ten tails would be summoned anyway you know so there, there's just big issues all around so that's kind of like our thoughts do you want to like wrap um encapsulate your thoughts overall yeah so overall like thunder god said in the original narrative itachi stops the edo tensei fairly early in the war um the the difference here is quite amount of is quite a bit of time you could say a couple hours i think the whole war was like 12 hours or something like that so a couple hours more the, the divisions of the alliance would have to combat these edo tensei and because of that casualties will be higher most definitely so with the edo tensei uh, having more time to dispose of the alliance, their numbers would dwindle, um, and the Ten Tails would just have more success with less, with less of, less of the alliance present there. Again, it took the entire alliance and Naruto and the company until the Hokage arrived to even keep the Ten Tails somewhat at bay. Um, so it would be just a, it'd be a disaster, and with Madara's presence, uh, it, it would truly be a disaster. Um, you can even argue that because of this prolonged amount of time that. Maybe even before the Alliance show up, if Madara is summoned on the, the the Obito versus Naruto and company battle that by the time the Alliance get there, with the dwindling amount of Alliance that would be left, that Naruto's life might be lost by that point. Madara might have disposed of them and the Ten Tails, is this the full Ten Tails? Because maybe at that point, they most likely they would have disposed of Naruto and Killer B and, and company and r ripped out the, the Tailed Beast and the war's done. It'd be a very dark ending. Yeah. Um, if Itachi, Itachi and Minato, excuse me, if Itachi and Nagato were to engage in, in these battles and Madara was then summoned and then Itachi barely got around to stopping the Edo Tensei reanimation jutsu, it would be a very, very dark ending and an ending that the protagonist might actually most likely lose. So, yeah, in short, we got lucky that Kabuto sold in the original timeline because yeah, if he actually ended much. up like shuffling his cards uh, or, you know, moving his chess pieces in a couple different places. You know this could have ended very differently so we were very fortunate that that happened um obviously it still you know came pretty close despite you know the original story but still but that's the video obviously you know go check out jay it was a long video um let me know your guys thoughts how you think they do in this situation 
what ends up happening. Um, understand that this can go like nigh omnidirectional amount of ways, like in terms of how you can slice this up. So this is just like yeah. our interpretation and how we could potentially see it go. Let me know what you guys think though. If you maybe see it go a different way, I'm very interested to see what people say about that. But um, you know, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, catch you next time. Peace out, y'all. And this turns into like Itachi, Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Guy. Or I fuck. Let me re record that because I just fucking <laughs> said that. There's going to be somewhat of like. This word. Um, what's the fucking word I'm trying to see? Don't forget to click the link in the description and download Award Thunder now. You'll have access to all the rewards that you currently see on screen, including silver, boosters, a premium account for seven days, and more. With the icing on the cake being the anime body pillow. I mean, look at that cosmetic. It's beautiful. So go ahead and click the link in the description and download Award Thunder today.